After six years as police chief, David Nislight has officially retired and a new chief will be sworn in today. We'll tell you all about him. We're in the streets, in the shelter, and now we're, we're starting businesses. A local family success story after being homeless. Plus, will a restaurant surcharge ban not happen after all? And a famous donut shop is opening another location in San Diego at this very moment. It's 6 a.m. on Friday, June 7th, and you're up with CBS 8. Yeah, when we say at this very moment, we mean it. So now. check this out right now. Brandy's Donuts opened this new location here in Chula Vista. Literally, it's 6 a.m. The doors just opened, so all the people who are waiting outside in that long line are now getting inside. <laughs> this is an exciting time because they've been watching and drooling and waiting for this moment right now. People have been camping out in line, and it's because the first 10 people, they actually get free donuts for a year. So I can see the appeal why you'd be waiting out for maybe a few hours. Uh, but that, that's the first man right there. They got What's inside. He pick? So <laughs> Julio Vasquez is our, uh, he's the photographer that's showing us this look inside now. Right. He said 50 people were in line <laughs> before they unlocked it. Clint from Chula Vista was the first person he got there at Yay. three. And he says he's a donut connoisseur. So this must okay. be Clint right here that they're talking to. He's got a bear claw. I love a bear claw. Is that what he's going for? Yeah. A bear claw. Yeah. Okay. So nice. we're going to go and check back in on these guys. Julio, if you can hear us, put some dibs on a bear claw for us. <laughs> um, we're going to have more details on that, plus more freebies for National Donut Day. Yeah. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. But thanks so much for joining us at 6 o'clock, 6.02 on your Friday morning. I'm Anna Laurel in for Eric Connard. And I'm Netta Irampour. Let's get you ready for this Friday. Meteorologist Evan Arani uh, telling us about the heat, but then there's also this mist in right. the air. Yeah. Everyone who's mix. come in to work with us, mm -hmm. Heather the other day, Anna mm -hmm. has come in and said, like, what are you talking about with Where this heat? excessive heat? <laughs> yes. uh, we're talking about the deserts exclusively. Okay. Coastline, inland, mountains are a question mark. But coastline and inland, we are at least staying in that cooler, more mild range. And you can thank the marine layer for that. So we're going to continue to hold on to these types of conditions. We're along the coast and inland. Things stay incredibly mild. Uh, cloud cover is dense this morning. We even have some reduced visibility out there. Take a look. One mile in Miramar. 0.3 miles in Ramona, 6 miles in El Cajon. Today's forecast shows upper 60s along the coast, 70s as you start to make your way east, and the mountains and deserts will still be warm slash hot. Coming up, we'll talk about how the weekend's going to be shaping up. Back to you. Evan, thank you for that. And now later today, San Diego's next top cop will be officially sworn in. Scott Wall is about to become the next chief of police for the San Diego Police Department. CBS 8's Regina Yarita is live outside SDPD headquarters with everything we need to know about him, Regina. Yeah, good morning, ladies. And look, I could imagine how exciting but also emotional it is for some police officers as well as those who work for the San Diego Police Department because they had to say best of luck to David Nislight, who was a police chief for six years. Well, he stepped into these headquarters for the very last time yesterday and today. San Diego police will be sworn sworn in a new police chief. Chief David Nislight, thank you for your service. We wish you a happy retirement with your family. And so Assistant Chief Scott Wall will step into his new position today after he is sworn in. He will be the new San Diego Police Chief. Wall began his career in service for the San Diego Police Department 26 years ago. He's worked as a patrolman in the Southern Division and captain in the Northern Division. San Diego City Council unanimously approved Scott Wall as the next police chief. And a month ago, Wall reassured the council and the community of his commitment as he takes on his new position. He also talked about his plans to improve improve police interactions with the younger generation. So here's what Wall responded. What I want to do is bring our juvenile administrative services to a centralized focus, bring community policing to a centralized focus, and put that under one chain of command that can engage with all of the different programs and so Wall is expected to be sworn in later today around 2 p.m. We'll be covering this, so stick with CBS 8. For now, I'll send things back to you guys. Regina, thank you so much. And now this just in, the U.S. economy added 272,000 jobs in the month of May. That's according to new data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That is higher than the 180,000 jobs that economists were expecting. 
the unemployment rate did go up to 4% from 3.9%. We're going to see how the markets react to this jobs report coming up later this hour. This morning, the San Diego City Council's Budget Review Committee will discuss final recommendations for the mayor's proposed budget. The revised version of the total budget is $5.8 billion. The full council will vote on it Tuesday. Now, the mayor has been promoting its investments all week, including $88 million to upgrade the stormwater infrastructure, $200 million to address housing and homelessness. But not everyone agrees with how the mayor wants to spend that money. Protect District 2! Protect District 2! All right, you can see and hear that group of people, including mayoral candidate Larry Turner, heckling Mayor Todd Gloria during a press conference yesterday. They held signs opposing the Kettner and Vine mega shelter the mayor wants to open. They're also against using the H. Barracks location off North Harbor Drive as a safe sleeping parking lot. My budget proposal enables us to tackle this acute crisis on our streets today and making an investment in an ongoing management of homelessness. Now, the mayor says the city needs more beds, and he believes if there's city property that we can use, then we should use it. All right, your taxes may go up. Two new proposed tax measures, one of which would increase the city of San Diego's sales tax by one cent. They're now advancing to the city council. The other measure would create a special fund for flood prevention in response to January's flooding. It'd be a parcel tax of seven cents per square foot raising roughly $130 million a year. It would benefit communities hit by flooding, but some people are still not on board. I like the thought of being able to raise a fund to help this from happening again, but increasing taxes on homeowners and homeowners that would affect the same area where they live and they own these homes, I don't think is okay. So if approved by the council this summer, it will ultimately be on the November ballot. So ultimately it will be up to you, the voter. Right now, a heat dome is sending temperatures soaring in California and our neighboring states. It's the West Coast's first significant heat wave of the year. It comes from a big ridge of high pressure trapping the air that gets baked by the sun. Our desert areas like Ocotillo Wells, Borrego Springs peaks close to 110 degrees yesterday. The National Weather Service explaining why there's such a big difference between the desert and the coast. Our ocean temperatures are still pretty cold, so when we have the air blowing off that, it kind of acts as a natural air conditioner, and, you know, the cloud cover prevents it from warming up so much, too. All right. Well, this heat dome spans across several states. So that includes California, Nevada, and Arizona. Excessive heat warning for our desert in effect until tonight. Uh, Evan's been talking about that heat, of course. <laughs> But then when you step outside, it's like misty. It's cloudy <laughs> and cool. 55 degrees. Yeah. yeah, and everyone's like, what is wrong what with you? What a difference. Yeah. What's going yeah. on? Where? Uh, yeah, huge difference. Ooh. This is where you really start to see the difference in microclimates in San Diego, right? When we're forecasting along the coast, there's such a difference in what you're forecasting across the desert. So a 40-degree difference. We peaked in the mid-60s yesterday along the coastline, very similar to today. And then we'll peak just over 100 degrees in the deserts today. And where is the middle ground? Well, it's in about the middle of the county. You could basically draw a line down the center of it and areas east of that marine layer. So when that marine layer is active in the morning, areas east of it that have that full sun beaming down in the morning have the tendency to warm up because they have so much time to do so versus that marine layer dropping or at least keeping our temperatures mild uh, through the morning. And then maybe it pulls back for an hour or two, but that's not nearly enough time for us to see our temperatures along the coast and inland warm up. Uh, upper 70s still across the valley floors, 68 along the coastline this afternoon. We're still calling it hot out there across the mountains and deserts. Here's what it's at right now when you look outside. We're at 58 degrees in Ramona and Alpine, but predominantly 60s as we start off today. Encinitas, 60 degrees. Oceanside, 61 right now. Five-day forecast shows a little bit of a cool down that we'll get for the upcoming weekend. That's why most of those heat-related alerts expire this evening. And then into early next week, we're right back to warm territory. It's not all that much of a break that we get from the warmer temperatures. So I want to point out that it is going to be a bit breezy at times, including in Julian. This is specific to Julian, but our mountains and deserts will be breezy. 20 to 30 miles per hour by no means qualifying us for a wind advisory or any wind-related warnings. But you do have to keep in mind that 
you'll definitely feel that breeze out there and you'll feel the heat too. Along the coastline, all we made it to yesterday was 68 degrees. We stayed in that cooler than average range, whereas average is now 71. So cooler than average along the coast, but warmer than average as you start to move east. Let's talk about traffic, take you to a spot where fog is socking in the view a bit and where we have a stalled vehicle. This stalled vehicle is in Rancho Bernardo, 15 northbound. Two lanes blocked there at Camino del Norte exit. Uh, volume still very light this morning, so it's not causing any major backup CHP. We're going to clear that as we speak. Let's check in on your border wait times right now. 60 minute wait at the San Ysidro port of entry. Otay Mesa port of entry going to run you an extra half hour. It's about a 90 minute wait at that port of entry. Back to you. Interesting there. All right. Thanks, Evan. Still had could President Joe Biden pardon his own son if convicted. Plus, former President Donald Trump holds his first rally since his conviction. We'll show you who's in the running to be his VP pick. And we are back live out at famous Randy's Donuts opens a new location in the South Bay. 50 people were in line when they opened just 10 minutes ago. So we're going to take you back out there and see what all the excitement is about.